Tuesday was great. No question about it. Tuesday was great. For the most part, there were some negatives. We'll talk about some of the good and some of the bad that we haven't talked about yet with Brittany Mayer, host of the Brittany Mayer Show. Brittany, okay, first let's, let's, let's talk about the bad we've all been celebrating. Let's focus on the bad for a moment. It wasn't the best night in the world for pro-lifers like me, it, it, not by any stretch of the imagination, with the exception of a few states like Florida. Pro-abortion things got passed in this country. This is just who we are now. Yeah, I, that's a big hit, right? I, I've been so focused on the positive that now you're whiplashing me. I'm like, oh, yeah, there was some negative. That was a big <laughs> uh, disappointment. But um it does show that we still have work to do in this country. You know, we can't slack off and let our foot off the gas. So in that sense, I think the mandate for us as pro-lifers is clear that we have to keep this conversation going and not get lazy. We've seen such a change in the Republican Party, right? Like this new MAGA, MAHA movement where we have become much more friendly to the murder of the unborn. And as an abolitionist and you too, I think that that just shows that there is work to do, you know, within this tent. And that starts with conversation. And really, um, at the, the very base bottom line is that abortion is killing our most innocent and our society will be judged for how we treat our most innocent and vulnerable. So yes, there is still more work to do. Overall, such great news coming out of Tuesday, but um, on the abortion issue, we've got our work cut out for us. Yeah, that's that's how it goes. All right, now let's enough of that nonsense. Let's focus on the good. Something that I know you're going to be all over like white on rice, but a lot of people may not realize Gascon, LA, he's gone? He is gone. You know, I've been looking at the the map. I actually pulled it up here. This is this is California, and a lot of people are going to be surprised to know that California is not as hard blue as they want us to think it is. Uh, and we're seeing that in a lot of the propositions that were on the ballot. But most importantly, the fact that Soros-backed Gascon is gone. He was a huge reason why California has been shredded, torn to pieces. When you see Los Angeles, you know, the smash and grabs and those crazy car scenes where you have cars whipping out of control with passenger or people standing around watching late at night, that's in large part due to both Kamala Harris and Gascon. Well, we just passed a grassroots proposition that uh, Gavin Newsom did not want on the ballot. He did not want to pass. And overwhelmingly, the people of California said, enough, we want law and order back. We want safe streets again. We want to be able to walk on the sidewalks and not be stepping over needles and literal human feces like you've seen in San Francisco, that famous map oh. that was held up at the debate. Um, I think it was the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, who held it up and showed that it's littered by human feces. So the California people have had enough with these progressive policies. And one of the biggest hits to progressive policies was removing uh, Gascon from office. California, obviously you're a resident there. It's a place that I love dearly. I've lived there before. I have so many friends there. It has the most Republicans of any state in the union. Most people don't realize that, but it has seemed fairly hopeless statewide for quite some time. But hopeless is a word you don't want to use often. Is there a chance, it's not going to be next year, right? Five years from now. Is there a chance it can come back? 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt, California will turn red. Mark my word for it. It will turn red. And you know what it's going to take? It's going to take people like me and a lot of good people in California. You saw that map I just showed. California is very, very much red. It's much more red than people give us credit for. And I think county by county, if the good people in California, the patriots, continue to resist the progressive policies and continue to run good people for lower offices, we will see a comeback in California. We just saw what happened in Pennsylvania. I don't think that California is out of the dialogue of there being a comeback. And you couple that with these progressive policies that are literally pushing Californians out of California. And a lot of those are the wealthy who have turned a great profit off these progressive policies. They're leaving in droves. It's the lower class who's forced to stay. And those are the good people who are sick and tired of the policies but can't afford to leave. So I actually think that we will see a turn in California. It won't be, you know, in this next election. But uh, 
I, I think in our lifetime, we're going to see California turn red. I'm going to hold you to that, Brittany. I'm going to hold okay, you to that. Good. All right, before I, before I let you go, uh, <laughs> it does look like the people of this country really, really hate illegal immigration. We had eight states that had ballot measures saying, hey, they can't vote, they can't, and they all passed. It didn't matter where it was. The people of this country are sick to death of open borders, and it's giving me maybe a glimmer of hope that this country might have the stones it's going to take to deport about 20 million people. I absolutely think that the country is ready for it. Uh, I was talking to Bill Malugin the other day, and uh, he was saying that the border mattered. The border mattered. That was a huge driving force that pushed people who typically would not vote, even the, the Hispanic vote. We saw a huge swing in the Hispanic vote of these people who the Democrats wrote off as being all for these progressive policies, you know, uh, humane borders. And smart Americans are looking at this and saying, this is objectively unsafe. We are bringing in unsafe criminals, like Trump has been saying for a long time. They're emptying their jails and they're sending them here. And Americans finally saw that and the border mattered. And people said, we don't want four more years of this. Not only do we not want four more years of this, but we want America safe again. And they made that mandate very clear in electing Donald Trump. I think that the American people are absolutely ready for mass deportation. And I would say the American people as a whole, you have those liberal patches who are always going to complain and whine, but they're very small. Overwhelmingly, the American people have spoken and said, shut the borders down and mass deport. You know, round them up and get them out. Brittany, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.